you get that good shot? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No. Things are getting pretty serious right now. Dude, it's rosine. What's not to like? That's what I'm trying to figure out. First thing I'm going to say here is thank you guys so much for everybody who entered to win the first gen here plus the $5,000 in cash. And we're going to go over some quick, very brief parameters, I guess you could say, on entry dates, timing, and estimated winner draw dates, stuff like that. So the first gen, if you entered anywhere between, I believe it was between February 10th and March 19th, you were entered for the first gen. If you entered anytime between March 15th and March 19th, you're entered for the first gen and you're entered into the Rosine giveaway. That was our dual entry period, which just to sum up the dual entry period, there's some people that are confused by it. And they're like, oh, well, I'm not gonna enter until you know after a certain date because I don't want my entries to get split between two trucks. I just want this one or I just want that one. Your entries don't get split during a dual entry period. Like if you check out and it says you've got 4,000 entries, you get 4,000 into that giveaway and 4,000 into the other. So basically you're getting 8,000 entries, or in other words, you're basically getting 60 times entries essentially. It's pretty freaking wild. For the first gen, we should have a giveaway winner drawn for this truck in approximately seven to 12 days now. Seven to 14 days in total from March 19th when that giveaway ended. That was the last full day to get entered for that. And then for Rosine, the giveaway runs until April 16th and then we will have a giveaway winner for that truck shortly after that. For those of you that are wanting to enter for Rosine, right now our highest entry multiplier and bonus is live that we have literally ever done. And we're doing this because it's such a special truck. If you haven't done so yet, check our emails. Check down in the comments section or down in the description below, and I will leave a very delightful bonus code for you guys down there to get entered towards winning Rosine over there, plus the five grand that comes with that truck. These are two separate drawings, two separate potential winners, or you could get lucky enough to get drawn for both. But you're never going to know unless you enter. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for all the love and support. We appreciate you. Let's get on with the video. Okay, and another thing, Reagan and I made a trip in her truck the other day, about an hour, 20 some minutes away and she purchased a massive item that has been on her bucket list for a long, long time. So small project here in the woods with the little little steel trimming saw. I was gonna do a little stuff with the tractor, kind of back part, it's just too wet. You know, it's been a great winter because it's not been too cold, but it's kind of been those weird temperatures where everything's always just muddy. So the tractor was kind of tearing things up. But we got a plot here that last year I didn't get a lot of time and I did not have the equipment, like I didn't have a tractor and stuff to be able to really transform this which is one of the things i told time super excited about this year is i'm going to have the ability to actually make some changes once this ground dries out enough i'm going to be able to transform this into an absolutely epic little food plot um, and i was just showing him one of these turnips where i throw it one of these turnips here and all i did for this location last year was i took my late grandfather's al shelmer's just kind of mowed a little horseshoe shape in here and just broadcasted some turnips into the tall grass. And this is about the average size of them, you know, between the size of a golf ball and a baseball, like kind of in the middle. There's some, there's some bigger ones in here, but this is about the average. So what I'm gonna do this time is just really blow this plot up because the deer use it a lot. I'm going to be leaving this small oak here in the middle as a vocal point, something to focus on for licking branches and mock scrapes whichever one you want to refer to them as because it's got a lot of perfect height limbs coming off there ty if you're looking at this the same way i am you're thinking man if you could just get the brush down around this put a small ply in half of this bottom tell me that's not a spot a buck's not going to come out and hit that as he's working this edge 
coming through here. I mean, one hundred percent. It's going. It's going to be perfect. You can already see like this little tree here, just from putting this strip of plot in. A buck stopped by here while after he was done feeding and tore this little tiny tree up. But it's one of those spots where, with the food here, we're going to work on a lot of bedding. The licking branches with the mock scrape tree there. It's going to be sick. And it's in like a naturally, like if you show them around, it's like a naturally low spot. So it kind of, it kind of feels safe because it's probably the most private feeding location on the property to not see human activity. Like you can still hear some stuff, but like the only spot on the property where you can feed and really not see any kind of human activity and kind of feel like the most private location is probably this one. So we're definitely gonna be setting up somewhere in the trees up there to have an opportunity to harvest a buck off this plot. Everything I set up is to try to make it an easier opportunity to harvest a mature deer. That's kind of the goal. If you're just wanting to shoot does and fawns, you don't really have to do much more than dump a bucket of corn and you're gonna have some kind of button buck roll in there if you just wanna whack those. But if you wanna to try to shoot higher quality deer, it can just take a lot more work. Ty would know, Ty shot a freaking booner last, literally a booner in the 160s. So it takes a lot of time and dedication to get it. We're gonna work on that. Enjoy the dramatic footage as we try to create some more bedding and transform this little location as much as we can until it's time to find it. Deceive me, muddy hands break through the chains, go free me People like sheep, move feet, hurt it easy You don't wanna be fast asleep when they scheme me Better stand tall, ready for a fight, believe me When they try the chains, you can say no, free me so he's been looking for somebody who could save him Instead of searching inside for what they gave him A strong will, strong mind causes mayhem We could change the world, change times, rearrange them Staying on pace, running the race, life is a chase I don't wanna place, I wanna be first Work till it hurts, dehydrated thirst till I'm in a hearse oh. High ambitions in the right mind can take you so far It's like you lived a few lifetimes Take off, I'ma break off from the weak minds They can stay soft, you can change lives, you create thoughts Never waste time, you got one shot, you got one life Better pop off, what do you like? Make a dream job, no 9-5, no mean boss Just my life and free thoughts You could try to play, but you're never gonna beat me Look the other way, what I'm doing ain't easy Bloody and stain from the people who deceive me Muddy hands break through the chains, go free me People like sheep, move feet, hurt it easy You don't wanna be fast asleep when they scheme me Better stay tall, ready for a fight, believe me When they try the chains, you can say no, free me So we're gonna give you just a real small recap For those of you that might care We did trim off some of the branches from this tree over here I'm gonna come get a little closer look here at it and all I did was I trimmed off some of these branches. That way we can get up real close to the tree for our food plot. And it'll give us some perfect looking branch opportunities right there. If you don't know what looking branches are, it's kind of like um, a form of communication through the whitetail herd. Whether it be translating that a buck is exerting his dominance, this is his area, just checking on what deer have been using it. It's kind of like a communication source that deer use. It sounds weird to us, but that's what they do. I actually have an idea of what I'm gonna do back to here. Thinking about clearing up this area back to here and actually planting this some switchgrass down in this corner. A for bedding, but mostly for screening to kind of create a little bit more of a visual barrier because we did produce a lot of bedding back in there the other side of all this brush. This is part of this bedding area. And the reason for these hinge cuts here, these aren't necessarily gonna be big food producers because they didn't come all the way to the ground. But the main objective here is just to create more of a visual barrier. So when we get up in the trees, lay on the other side of this brush here, which are hard to see, which is the point, a deer could be better than through this stuff, up against these logs, down through here anywhere. And the hopes and goals are that they do not visually see us. And as long as our wind is good, we should be in the game. We should be one of the desirable bedding areas for this location. Coming down through here, trim some stuff back. Trim some stuff back here. And I dropped a couple of trees, just some small ones right there to kind of cut off traveling through that location. And then I dropped these for the same reason that I dropped the other ones. That way there can be more bedding back through this stuff. And between all this brush here and all these treetops, it'll create a visual barrier from that 
A, from the food plot, if there's deer feeding in there, it'll kind of reduce the social pressure if there's deer bedded here while there's deer out there feeding, but then also it'll kind of help create a visual barrier to get into that tree stand back over there with making it as hard as possible for a deer to actually spot us if there's deer bedded back in here. Visual is a big deal. You can kind of play the wind as long as you know where the deer like to bed. You can kind of play the wind and be pretty smart through that avenue and not really have to worry about bumping them as long as your wind's good. But visually, sometimes deer will bed in locations that maybe the wind is not perfect all the time, but visually they can bust you almost every single time. And if you turn around back to here, I trimmed a bunch of stuff down back here. And I made it so that there will be opportunities for deer to bed all back through this stuff along the creek bed. It's real grassy in here, especially in October. It kind of stays, for the most part, like this nice hidden location that is heavily used there's i mean there's trails that come all down across this creek i've seen deer bedding through here it's pretty good and then you can see like that little tree there it's all they got all tore up last year from deer cutting through this stuff and then over here bedding i mean we try to hinge cut a couple of things but for the most part this area is well hidden enough from the plots and from our access that we really don't even have to do a whole lot in this spot and the deer already naturally use it there's good wind break it's a nice low it's a nice low spot but if you look down on the sides of it there's also lower little ditches around it so it's kind of like this grassy island which makes it nice because it doesn't flood and the deer can stay dry but also still have that nice wind break because it's down in a low spot and it just it ends up working out really well and then we did find some bedding up in here that's already kind of naturally there we didn't mess with it yet we might not at all other than a little bit of trimming but there was a bunch of hair in some of the beds and that's something i like to look for when i'm trying to figure out okay where were these deer bedding on the property last year how can i hunt better to make sure i'm not blowing out those locations or if i don't want them bedding there what do I have to do to try to prevent them from using that spot because it makes it hard for me to kill them? This location's fine though, because it works out perfectly with the bedding we're already working on. Got this property, pretty good start here on next year's stuff. And then if you look behind here, you can see one of these creek crossing spots where they use this a lot. And then what I did was I hinge cut the tops of some of these trees here to kind of, again, same objective. Try to prevent deer from being able to have good visual out to the food plot into the tree I'm gonna be trying to access but I do give them opportunity to get out to that direction, of course, in multiple different ways. One of those ways being, I brought these big limbs down, piled a bunch of brush up in here, trying to make it visually really hard to see. And in the summer, this stuff's gonna get nasty, viney, briars, it's gonna be really cool. But then I hinge cut this stuff down. This might've been unnecessary, but I did notch this did notch this log down just to make it a little bit easier for a deer to step over. And then I just kind of like trimmed out some of the branches from these things that were in the way. And it gives these deer a nice, easy path right up to the plot, which puts them within about 40 yards of my tree as soon as they step out. So pretty much as soon as they get to the plot, hopefully they'd come closer, but as soon as they're in the plot, they are within lethal range and it's game on. It's been a good mower for me. I never used it one time. Nah, that's not true. We did use it for snow one time. That's true. We used it as a plow. Yeah. Now that we're done out in the woods there, we're having a little little issue here at the wife's truck. It was doing this when we first looked at it and I knew it, but I didn't think it was that big of a deal. As you can see when I let go, the hood does not stay open. It appears that the hood struts there are bad. We ordered some new ones sitting over here in the box. We're gonna unbox them and hopefully get them installed. I literally did not record any of that last part of that video. <laughs> 
you get both the hood struts on. I'm gonna reopen the hood here so I can demonstrate again, kind of explain what I did. So this hood now like launches open. Brand new hood strut over here. Just had to pop the clip off the top there and off the top on that one. Same on this side. Had to pop these clips up and they kind of slide down towards the end. And then it's just a little ball joint that just kind of like slides on a little ball and then it just slides the clip down and they lock in and that's it i had my phone sitting here i thought i was recording the whole time but it was not kind of tough to close because it's actually it's actually doing what it's supposed to now which is pretty crazy definitely worth the 20 dollars to upgrade those things i'm telling you i mean if your hood struts if they're like wore out and it's kind of a pain for your hood to stay open definitely just consider swapping those things out i mean it was 20 25 bucks on amazon totally worth it well everybody i hope you enjoyed the video a little bit of a mix of things again first and winter should be coming 7 to 14 days from when it ended which was like two days ago on march 19th and for rosane our highest bonus is live right now for the entire duration of this giveaway 30 times entries for every one dollar you spend we'll get you entered towards winning this truck plus five thousand dollars in cash i've had a lot of trucks that mean something to me and this is definitely probably gonna be the hardest one to see go yet. Anyways guys, thanks so much. I'll catch you in the next video.